Now, two years ago today, here on Sky News, we aired my documentary, Going Nuclear, in which I spoke to experts here and around the world about why nuclear energy was the logical solution to Australia's and the world's net zero dilemma. You know the story, it's a dense form of energy. It doesn't require massive amounts of land for new transmission lines and wind and solar farms, and it doesn't produce greenhouse gases. Here's a reminder of what the doco contained. In this clip, it starts off with a look at small modular reactors, or SMRs. As we shut down coal-fired power stations like this one in Port Augusta, SMRs could quickly replace them on site. My understanding is you could actually deliver to that site an SMR, connect it into the transmission grid and virtually flick the switch. Yes, it is capable of fitting in with existing grid infrastructure that, and therefore replacing existing fossil fuel coal-fired power stations. And that's a real advantage because the grid costs can be expensive. So if you have a solution that can plug and play, you don't need to upgrade all of your grid to accommodate it. The younger generation is being brought up in a world where climate change is front and centre. And when you look at the facts and the science and you look at the data and you compare all of the energy generation sources that we have, nuclear has such a good story to tell from a climate change perspective, but also enabling us to continue our current way of life and, and, and indeed improve it. Yeah, it's all about the future generations and they might wonder why the boomers are so hung up on the so-called risks of nuclear energy. Mm. Well, let's see if the debate has advanced over the past two years by catching up with one of the experts from that doco, A.D. Patterson, who used to run Australia's research and medical nuclear reactor at Lucas Heights. A.D., good to talk to you again. It's good to be Two there. years on. Mm. Tell me, how do you think the debate has changed over the past two years? I think the two big things that change is we're starting to see a big shift globally. Uh, the Finnish reactor, which was apparently too expensive and took too long, is now on and has reduced their price of electricity to a third of what it was. So we know that they can look expensive, but your electricity gets cheaper, more reliable and safer, frankly. And other changes? I think the big other changes that happen, many countries, um, like Canada has just completed a big refurb of its uh, nuclear power plants. We've seen many new to nuclear countries start up their reactors, um, the UAE, for example. So we're seeing a new big nuclear world and then the micro reactors and the small reactors are starting to come online in various places. Yeah, now let's talk about what's happened in the political debate in Australia because there's been a significant shift. The coalition, especially under the <coughs> new opposition leader, Peter Dutton, has been very strong on nuclear. Just have a look at what he said even today, this is Peter Dutton earlier today. We've started the debate in relation to uh, the small modular reactors uh, around nuclear that can firm up the renewables in the system. Uh, in Ontario, they've got about 60 to 70 per cent of nuclear firming up their renewables. They pay half the kilowatt hour rate that we do here in Australia. So if we want to halve our electricity prices, we should look to the example uh, as we see in Ontario and elsewhere. Yeah, that's pretty forward-leaning stuff from Peter Dutton. AD, it seems obvious at the next federal election you're going to have a nuclear policy from the coalition, exactly what it's going to say we don't know yet, a nuclear proposal versus the government still holding out. Will that be a good step? I think it's an essential step. You know, the quality of our electricity is going down. South Australia is losing jobs because renewables don't just provide a challenge to the standard coal-based power, but if you have too much of it, uh, what they call instantaneous penetration of 100%, which is a strange term. Um, you actually reduce the quality of the frequency control. That means that 800 jobs have already left South Australia. Precision manufacturing is under threat in the place where we want to have uh, nuclear propulsion and submarines. Yeah, uh, you talk about having that... I think it's great we're going to have that political contest, but with something as controversial, as volatile as this issue... Don't we need bipartisan support? We've just seen with referendums how you really need bipartisan support to get them delivered. Might it not be the same with nuclear energy? I think it's true. When, when I worked with the Obama administration in the US, there was bipartisan support. That has intensified uh, recently. I think that most of the democratic world has got over the anti-nuclear fever of the previous generations. But most important, the cost of electrons and quality of electricity that we need for a modern... Um, 
a sort of post-manufacturing but smart economy means that you have to have quality electricity. We cannot have quality electricity with intermittent renewables. Yeah, we're getting more expensive and less reliable energy every day at the moment. Now, I just want to get you on the technology here because the coalition keeps pushing these SMRs, the small modular reactors, it's new technology, and there's no doubt if they come off the assembly line from Rolls-Royce or some of the other major manufacturers, that'll be a great fit for some locations in Australia. But that's also politically easy to talk about that. Isn't there more of an obvious need for maybe some traditional, modern versions of traditional fixed nuclear reactors, large reactors, say in a place like the Hunter Valley or the Latrobe Valley? I'm a big supporter of gigawatt scale. The big plants, they're the anchor tenants of a really reliable electricity grid. I'm also a big fan of these micro reactors, you know, the big red middle of Australia, micro reactors replacing the diesel grid. We need the micro reactors. We might need small modular reactors in some places. But to get the simplest, quickest and most elegant solution that we need, it's gigawatt scale reactors where we've got coal plants now. When you've looked at the energy challenges, the zero emissions challenges for not just Australia, but the world, mm. when I talked to you during that documentary two years ago, you said that the, the facts, the science, the economics are also obvious that this is inevitable. It's, it's going to happen sometime. Yeah. So therefore, the, the quicker we move, surely, the, the cheaper and more effective it's going to be. To me, the real test was Sweden, because Sweden had really been channeling Australia and they've changed their minds. They've realised that with all of the wind they put up and uh, all the intermittency they put into their grid, they couldn't make it work. Sweden used to have its own nuclear capability back in the day of making tiny little reactors but they are now going to go and build the next generation of reactors. They've got bipartisan support. I don't think it's a, it's a street fight. I think it's, it's people working together for the best solution for Australia. It's time for us to catch up. Uh, it's grown-ups in the room, and it's for a grown-up future, to be frank. AD, thanks so much for joining us. Great to hear from you again. Thank you very much. AD Patterson there used to head up Anstow and therefore run the Lucas Heights nuclear reactor south of Sydney, which is not used for energy. It's used for research and for medical supplies. Now,